Uh, give me this opportunity to introduce uh, the project, uh, Fiberplast. <coughs> it's a four-year project that started in 2008 uh, and will end uh, uh, um, in June next year. <coughs> so it's um, a large-scale uh, European project uh, uh, within a KBBE, uh, so knowledge-based bioeconomy. And uh, the goals of, of the call were to uh, <coughs> have a valorization of forest resources for the production of bio-based products. And also we uh, try to identify uh, some uh, ways for industrial exploitation of uh, forest biomass. Also we developed uh, some technologies uh, in the field of polyurethanes. And uh, um, particularly, we, we try to use uh, uh, wood-derived fibers instead of uh, glass fibers and mineral fillers. And uh, we developed some uh, biodegradable polymer wood-derived uh, fiber composites uh, in the field of um, um, automotive uh, packaging and agriculture. And also, uh, we also work on polyurethanes from <coughs> materials based on forest uh, resources. And uh, this uh, is our consortium. We have uh, 16 partners. We have uh, both researchers uh, and uh, uh, industries uh, and end users, large industries. Uh, also some, uh, an expert uh, on the market analysis. And also we have an industrial advisory uh, board and this uh, Dr. Kunaver just talked before me as a member of the Industrial Advisory Board uh, and probably has some connection, I think, with my invitation here, I guess. <laughs> and uh, in fact, we collaborated with him. Uh, I'll show you some results uh, that um, uh, were coming from the collaboration with Dr. Kunaver. Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, basically the area we've been uh, uh, working on, uh, it was a large project, so we had um, uh, the automotive market in mind, it was a big market. We had, uh, one of the partners was Fiat, and uh, then packaging and also agriculture. So we uh, also developed uh, some ideas for uh, potential products, uh, potential uh, demonstrators. One is a car seat, then we uh, have uh, biodegradable plant pots, and also uh, tomato clips uh, we show, and uh, one very successful uh, application we have found is an encapsulated fertilizer. This is based on starch and packaging uh, for cosmetics or chemicals or transport of fish or, or, or biological eggs. <coughs> These are materials. These are polyurethanes. In fact, uh, there are two types of polyurethanes here. Um, on the top of, of the screen, you see some um, um, polyurethane prepared from tal oil, which is a different technology from what uh, Dr. Kunaver has shown us uh, uh, before me. Uh, and this is different technology. This is a rigid uh, polyurethanes. We've been looking for application in automotive, and you see some uh, demonstrators, uh, uh, some pictures of demonstrators. On the bottom side of the, uh, of the slide, instead, uh, is a, a different type of, of, of polyurethane, which is um, uh, based on a modification of the process that Dr. Kunaver just showed us. We use the lignin instead of wood, uh, because uh, we can liquefy lignin without using um, a catalyst, uh, because uh, we don't need to cut down the molecule of cellulose, and uh, also lignin is a... Um, a, a, a material that we think that will be available uh, uh, as a, uh, a result of the process for biodiesel production or bi biofuel production. So lignin is a, a waste. Uh, While cellulose, uh, I think uh, we can be use uh, cellulose fibers as fillers, lignin is always a waste of many processes. So we try to use just lignin, uh, and this is a modification, I said, uh, it's easier because uh, it takes a shorter time. And, and, and also, uh, since everybody was doing um, rigid, uh, rigid forms uh, in the project, uh, 
For example, the group uh, in uh, Latvia, uh, led by uh, Dr. Ugis uh, Tsaboudis from uh, uh, Institute of Wood Chemistry. And uh, we tried to develop some flexible, flexible um, forms for automotive application. So this is... Uh, so this, uh, ah, this is okay, it's a PDF, so we lose uh, <laughs> the, uh, some, um, uh, uh, some part of the slide, it was covered, uh, sorry about this, uh, it was a, a PowerPoint presentation originally, but now it's only a PDF, so. Okay, so we, uh, about the composite, wood-based composites, uh, we, uh, we, we fought in the beginning to make some, um, some, uh, surface treatment uh, to improve uh, the bonding between uh, uh, the fibers and the uh, matrix. <laughs> um, about the composites, uh, we consider two classes of, of composites, one based on uh, uh, polypropylene, recycled polypropylene. In this case, uh, recycled polypropylene is very, uh, is not uh, non-polar, so it's difficult to mix uh, with uh, cellulose fibers. So you need uh, some uh, coupling agent to improve uh, the adhesion. Uh, in the case of PLA uh, and uh, PHB, we found that uh, there is not so much, uh, although the literature uh, is quite clear no, in the literature that uh, you should use uh, a coupling agent. In fact, uh, we found uh, that the results were good enough, uh, uh, and since the coupling agents are expensive, uh, so we found that uh, there is no real need uh, for using a coupling agent with PLA in our, uh, in our study. Also, we tried uh, um, acetylation of the fibers uh, to uh, try to limit uh, the uh, water uptake. So this is um, uh, an example of uh, uh, the possible application of composite and natural fibers in automotive uh, uh, applications, so mainly be door panels, uh, uh, seat cushions, uh, uh, cabin linings, and so on. So this is a, a huge potential for, for this type of application in automotive. <coughs> another, another area where we have been active is uh, biodegradable packaging, because uh, um, also in Italy we have a lot of problems with, uh, uh, with waste uh, and waste uh, management, so um, uh, it more and more will be, in the future, it will be uh, more difficult to use uh, uh, conventional polymers in packaging. So uh, I think we should look at uh, uh, forms of packaging can be uh, compostable so that we can uh, uh, put together the organic part uh, and the polymer without uh, separating. So this is a, uh, an area where we have uh, been uh, looking for. And uh, in PISA we have uh, some um, uh, equipment for preparing uh, the Composites, uh, we have uh, basically a very small uh, uh, lab scale uh, extruder, twin screw extruder with, uh, from Ake. And also we have a pilot uh, extruder so that we can uh, uh, scale up to about 40 kilos per hour. No? So this is a. Um, because uh, with a mini, mini lab, uh, we can uh, work on five grams, uh, so it's easy to prepare many, many different formulations. And when we select some which are, uh, give good results, you can go to scale up. And also we have some equipment for testing, uh, mechanical properties and the MTA and so. <coughs> As I said, uh, we tried also some uh, um, acetylation of the wood, uh, this uh, to um, avoid excessive um, water pickup uh, from, from the fibers. And uh, um, so we, we tested uh, different conditions, uh, particularly we tested different times, uh, situation times. Um, we found the process um, uh, a bit expensive to scale up. So I think uh, this is the main limitation, I think, uh, to, to uh, at the moment for, for this, this process. Although the results uh, uh, are interesting, but I think um, the, the old uh, cost uh, so far is still, uh, uh, um, I mean, not, not uh, uh, interesting for, for application. So we, we follow the acetylation reaction on uh, FTIR, and these are uh, wood fibers. Uh, so we, we found, uh, basically, we, we worked on two types 
here of, of matrix, uh, PLA versus PLA. Um, but uh, PLA is very brittle material. No? PLA uh, is not, uh, we cannot use a pure PLA and put some wood fibers in it because uh, the material is going to be extremely brittle and no application. So for composites, uh, we have to think uh, of making PLA more flexible and uh, there are several ways. Uh, uh, we tried uh, 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 blending with uh, uh, um, a biodegradable rubber uh, from BSF, uh, which is Ecoflex. Um, and so we basic basically uh, consider 50-50 composition and also 20-80. So it's basically is Ecoflex plus a little bit of PLA. You know? But, but um, if you want to put a lot of, of uh, fibers, uh, uh, there are some applications where you need a lot of flexibility then uh, PLA is not uh, the good uh, polymer, so, um, um, so we have to blend it. And so I cannot go into detail of the results, but uh, basically uh, I can tell you that uh, um, acetylation, uh, um, of course, uh, de decreases the bonding between <coughs> PLA and fibers because uh, it's already quite good. As I said before, we don't need a coupling agent for fibers uh, and uh, and uh, uh, PLA, uh, if we use acetylation, we decrease the number of OH groups uh, on the cellulose fiber, and then uh, adhesion is lower, but uh, better, uh, of course, water pickup.